Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're having a great day. I hope everybody's healthy out there. Today we're gonna to talk about a piece that is almost too good to be true, but it is. The end of the war, the Union government had all of these companies making all of this military uh, to go into service. They didn't know how long the Confederates would be able to hold out and keep and prolong the war because it had lasted longer than most people had ever thought that it would. They had all these companies making this stuff. So at the end of the war, the contracts were still in place and all of the materials, uh, a lot of it was still getting delivered. Some of it didn't, but a lot of it did. So what did they do with it? They sold it into surplus. And there were companies that bought up the surplus years later, uh, Stokes Kirk in Philadelphia, but the biggest and most famous of them all was Bannerman in New York. They actually sold stuff up until uh, the middle of the 1900s. They bought so much stuff, and they were on Governor's Island in New York Harbor, they had so much stuff that they actually used musket barrels for the rebar in the floor when they were pouring the concrete. That's a lot of stuff. And so Bannerman bought up all of these surplus pieces and they realized that there was a great market for them. They actually did a catalog up until the 1950s and they sold everything from uh, cartridges to cannon. They had full-size cannon that they would sell you. If you look in their 1903 catalog, they have these surplus belts for sale. And guess what it cost you? It cost you a whopping 75 cents plus postage for the belt, the cartridge box, the cap box, and the scabbard. So when you guys develop that time machine, go back and get me a few of these. We could both make a little money and I'll split it with you. So thank you to Bannerman for saving so many of the pieces that we get to collect today as collectors. One piece that you encounter in the Civil War world is a oval Model 1839 U.S. belt buckle, which is the classic buckle for the regular enlisted man during the Civil War. It's an oval brass face with uh, lead poured into the back of the buckle to make it more durable. It has arrow style hooks. They actually were making really quality pieces. This one actually has gold gilting on the front of the buckle. And that just means that they put a little bit of actual gold wash over the front of it. There was a company in Newark, New Jersey. It was Stephen Young. S.H. Young is the way that the stamp shows up. And I tried to get a picture of the stamping. You can, you can see what I'm talking about. The, he had uh, a contract on February 1st, 1865 to make 10,000 Well, that's what happens when you're a one-man show and you don't put your iPhone on airplane mode. Sorry about that, but we're back. I don't know where I was at, so I'll start over. In 1852, Stephen Young in Newark, New Jersey uh, was listed as a saddler, making leather equipment for horses. When the Civil War broke out, all of these guys that were leather workers realized, hey, this is a way I can make a lot of money. So they went into production making um, all types of military equipment, belts, cap boxes, cartridge boxes, scabbards. And in February 1st, 1865, Young had a contract to make 10,000 sets of infantry accoutrements, uh, meaning the cartridge box, the cap box, the belt, and the uh, bayonet scabbard made a really quality piece. And by this time, the government was picky and they had inspectors being sure that everything that bought, that was purchased, was good quality. And you can actually still see a little bit of the inspector's oval stamp by the maker's mark. The belts themselves are made of buff leather. And I always try to fact check what I tell you on here. And I was doing some research and I didn't realize that there was a dissertation to be had on what constitutes buff leather. Cause the general thing was it's made of buffalo hide. It's not. So I learned that my friend David Jarnigan and Ken Knopp uh, did that dissertation uh, on what, uh, where it started, 
uh, what causes it and how they treat and process this kind of leather. So if you go onto their website, confederatesaddles.com, and that's Ken's site, but David Jarnigan helped him uh, with a ton of it because uh, David is a wealth of knowledge on uh, all kinds of leather stuff. And they also make wonderful reproductions. They uh, made for a lot of the movies and great people down there. If you get a chance, it's uh, David Jarnigan. But if you go on there, you find out that the buff leather uh, started back in the 1500s. And the first military order that they could find was Henry VIII, where he ordered some uh, buff hides. And they were made of a wild cattle that went extinct in the 1600s. Who would have known? We all learned something on these things. Uh, so these are made of buff leather, which is just a rough leather. Most of the leathers of the day were nicely finished. These have that rough texture to them. And all of Young's show up with that. These are all probably that 1865 of February contract. Uh, I can't say that for sure, but this is what shows up the most and that makes more sense than anything else. This one is in beautiful condition and that's why I said when you look at it, you think, oh, that thing's got to be a reproduction. It's not. And when you look closely at the crafting of the buckle, at the quality of the workmanship on it, uh, this one even has the original brass length adjuster on it. Uh, it's just as nice and as close to mint as you could hope for. And... So sometimes things that seem too good to be true can actually be that good. So just be sure who you're getting it from because they do reproduce, reproduce? I made a new word today. They do reproduce this belt a lot. And just be sure of who you get it from. You can see this one and other ones uh, on regular belts and other buff leather belts on the website at shilohrelics.com. Go under uh, belt buckles. I've got a whole section for belt buckles because I like them. And you can see those. You can see lots of other things. And I appreciate you taking time to watch this. If there's something you'd like to see, now don't hesitate to let me know because I'm no mind reader, but I will try to accommodate if I can. I hope that you guys are healthy. I hope you guys stay safe. I hope that when you get the opportunity, you be kind to people. And I know I say that a lot, but it, I mean it a lot. I hope that you all uh, know that you are loved and I will catch you next time. Have a great evening.